It says, but how will they, how will people call on him in whom they have not believed? They can't. And how will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? You gotta hear something. And how will they hear without a preacher messenger? Amen. James, the fifth chapter. I was reading it out of Amplified, 515. Amen. James 515. It had a, a little different than the King James that give light. It says in verse 15, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. But that's that the word about, of God. Now, but is, is that talking about somebody that's already saved them? Well, we don't know if they say it or not. It's so written to the church. See, there's a lot of people in the church that hasn't heard the good news. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why we're looking in Romans, the 10th chapter, because that next verse, verse 15, says, And how will they preach unless they have, unless they are commissioned and sent for that purpose? Just as it is written, how and forever remains written, just as it is written and forever remains written, mm -hmm. how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of good tidings. Mm -hmm. See, we said this last week. You have to be anointed to bring the word of God mm -hmm. in order for people to hear the word of God. And we know that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power mm -hmm. and went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. So you can be oppressed of the devil and be saved. Mm -hmm. But you know it's said in Acts and all the other books we read and the Lucas that the Lord before he wanted them to even go out he wanted them to be full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. That, mm -hmm. That's what you have. That's what, if we're going to act like Jesus, mm -hmm. he was full of the Holy Spirit and power. God anointed him. Now, we all are witnesses. We all can be witnesses. And that's what he was saying. In order to be a witness, a witness, you should be filled with the Holy Spirit, too. You should be. Amen. You get turned around. Now, <laughs> Real quick. Amen. This 15th verse. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah says something. Jeremiah 23. We're talking about the 15th verse in James. We're talking about the 15th verse, verse in Romans. Oh, okay. Amen. Now, the reference again is what, Jeremiah? Now, if you go to Jeremiah... The 23rd chapter. Mm -hmm. He says something very interesting here. Because, you know, going to theological school and getting a degree in the study of God and all the different languages and all of that, that don't make you a preacher. Mm -hmm. We found that out in, in our Tuesday night class that they... They, when Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing, they said, what is this? Because they knew his mother, his brother, Sister. sisters, and they knew he was, you know, was a carpenter, and they, they wanted to know where he got all this wisdom and knowledge. Well, where you get it from is God. You believe what he said. And see, that's what Jesus did. He only said what he heard his father say. That's how he had really power in his words. Because we learned in our beginning of our these five W's of faith that that's how the father functions, by faith. Mm -hmm. He just don't say something.
something to carry on a conversation like we do. You know, how you doing? You know, what's been going on? When he speaks, things happen. Mm -hmm. And this is the way he's training us that when we speak, it should, things should happen. Our words have power. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So Jeremiah 23, 32, what does that say? Behold, I'll read the Amplified. Behold, mm -hmm. I am against those who prophesy lying dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err and go astray by their lies and by their vain boasting and recklessness. But I did not send them or command them, nor do they profit these people at all, says the Lord. So he's saying here in the 32nd verse, now out of this Amplified, it says, hear this. I am against those who have prophesied false and made up dreams, saying the Lord, and have told them to, and have told them, and have made my people err and go astray by their lies and by their reckless boasting. Yet, I did not send them or commission or command them, or do they benefit and enhance the life of these people in the slightest way? Yes. Can I say, I was saying here in 23, 14, and 15, too, but the Lord said he would do to me. <laughs> well, yeah, the, 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 here's the whole, here's, here's the most important thing that I want y'all to pick up today mm -hmm. from this, what we're going over, mm -hmm. is what you speak mm -hmm. as power. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not speaking what God says, and you're speaking what the world is saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> we know who the God of this world is. Right. It's going to do something too. But also, he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? This is in uh, Romans, the, seventh, uh, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse. Actually, the Amplified says, So faith comes from hearing what is told and what is heard comes from comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. And remember what last week we looked at uh, the word is the rhema, the spoken word. And Christ is the crystals, the anointed word. So it's actually the spoken word of God mm -hmm. that is anointed, that's going to help you. Not what somebody's making up. Mm -hmm. Not what somebody said that, you know, this is what the Lord said and he didn't say. Well, you know, that's a term, you, you know. Uh, that's what you just read there in 32. Right. We can't, we can't say the Lord said something and it's not in his word. Right. And that's what happened. Jeremiah was telling them what the Lord said and, you know, that they were going to get carried away into Babylon. And then the other false prophets were saying that they were all right. Guess what happened? They got carried away into Babylon. But and, and I was just reading that the other day, I think it was in 26. And God told them, He told them through Jeremiah, He said, only listen to Jeremiah. He said, because Jeremiah is saying what I'm telling you. Well, here's the way this works. In this time that we live in, mm -hmm. if somebody is not telling you the word of God, mm -hmm. Be aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they'll mix it, don't you? <laughs> I'm just saying. Did you hear what I'm saying? They said they that they God said. It. It. And see, this is why it's so important that yes. I tell you to read your chapter mm -hmm. every day, five days a week. Mm -hmm. Because in uh, John the 10th chapter, mm -hmm. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. Hear my voice. That's how you hear his voice. John 10. That's in John the 10th chapter. But well, maybe we should go over there. Yeah, let's do it because I'm going to make a note. Let's go over there in, in the 10th chapter of John. Mm -hmm. We found out that John is the apostle of love. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, Sister Carter's been preaching on the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat>
Okay. Who gives life? The flesh conveyed no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, providing eternal life. And mine says he is the life giver. So the word is spirit That's right. and life. Spirit and mm -hmm. life. Proverbs 18, 21. Gives us wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Proverbs 18, 21. A lot mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. verses mm -hmm. wow. that are we're mm -hmm. going to is for the help us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And let us know how powerful our words are. He says here in 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat the fruits and bear the consequences of their words. Amen. So if you're speaking life, mm -hmm. you're going to get the benefits of life. Mm -hmm. If you're speaking death, mm -hmm. You're going to get the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. See, that's what, you know, what we say has a lot to do with what happens in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what we hear, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about what your ears on the side of your head. I'm talking about what your spiritual ear, mm -hmm. what you hear in your spirit. Mm -hmm. That's going to determine on what's going to happen in your life. If you believe it. Right, if you, if you Because he said, who has believed our report? Who has are. believed our, the war, you know, you our word? But, you know, First Peter 2.2 2 gives an example here. First Peter 2.2. 2. God's word is it's the truth. It's life is life giving, like you see it. Yes, it is. First Peter the two light, two. The light, the light. And it's probably what you would bring you out of darkness into the marvelous one of you two. Well, we'll read verses one to three. This is more light. But in those days. Wait a minute, 1 Peter, 1st Peter, 2nd chapter. I mean, you know, I went to 2 2 now. We don't want to go to you. See, <laughs> that's the way we all should be. Uh -huh. When somebody says, this is in this book and this verse, this chapter, this verse, and they start reading it, mm -hmm. it should register with your Holy Spirit. No, wait a minute, that ain't what God said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It should stop. An alarm should go off. Mm -hmm. well, that's how a lot of teachers end up saying a lot of things out of context. Mm -hmm. Because they, didn't, they not, may not be taking heed to the speak. They may be taking the scriptures out of context. Okay, what does this say? One, two, three. One, Verse chapter two. <laughs> verses one, two, three. <laughs> Sorry about my ear. Well, we all make ears. That's why I, I like having people during these recordings because mm -hmm. it keeps me on track. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I'll say, go here, mm -hmm. and I'm reading somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we want to, you know, get this on record, you know, when faith okay. comes. Mm -hmm. You know, these messages that we um, broadcast. Mm -hmm. So what does okay, that say? So put aside every trace of malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander and hateful speech. Like newborn babies, you should for the you should long for the pure milk of the word. So that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation. This ultimate fulfillment. If in fact you already tasted the goodness and gracious kindness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that 
we need uh, milk uh -huh. of the word. Milk is important for growth in a child. Mm -hmm. And whether we know it or not, we are children of God. Mm -hmm. To him, we are just babies. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are babies. So, if you have tasted, mm -hmm. right, it says, um, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you know this already, if you have tasted the Word of God, you know that that milk of the Word has done something for you, right? You can pretty much tell if that milk is spoiled. You get a glass of milk out of the refrigerator and you pour it in your glass and you get ready to drink it, your smelling will say something's not right. But if it gets past your nose, your tongue will say no. Something is not right here. This milk, this, this milk, something's wrong with this milk. And even if it goes down in your belly, your stomach will say, ugh, man, something was wrong here. Mm -hmm. And see, we as children. Oh, can I say this? Go ahead. And then, if it doesn't, even there, the lingering taste in your mouth. So mm -hmm. there's going to be something left to let you know. Ooh, I'm going to pour this out. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? The lingering taste. Just like sometimes, like you were saying, sometimes people say part of the word, trying to mix life and death together. Well, here's Something what live, here's what sincere. Uh, if you do a reference on that word sincere, okay. it leads you to Psalms 19.
you, you don't want none of that other stuff no more. You see what I'm saying? You want to hear what God wants, wants you to hear. What he's saying. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Let's get a little bit more information on this. The milk. Okay. okay. Hebrews 5. Are you going? Can I go with you? Oh, okay. You can stand up. I don't know. Don't be in there touching Hebrews, nothing. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Nothing. Now, all of the Hebrews is good. Mm -hmm. But this... Well, actually, starting at the 11th verse. I'm going to read out King James to make him read out of It says, Of whom we have many things to say mm -hmm. and hard to be uttered. Seeing you are dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. We all are dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Mm -hmm. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Mm -hmm. Read it out after. Can you read two? Yeah, I read two. Where do you want me to read? Where are you watching it? Yeah, read it. Um, is that where I just read? Yeah, yeah. you read four first. Yeah, 11 through 14. Concerning this, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, mm. since you have become dull and sluggish in your spiritual hearing, mm -hmm. and this inclined to listen. Well, though by this time you ought to be teachers, because of the time you have had to learn these truths, you actually need someone to teach you, again, the elementary principles of God's Word hmm. from the beginning, and you have come to be continually in need of milk, not solid food. Hmm. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, which is of conformity to the divine will and purpose, thought, and action. For he is a mere infant, not even able to talk yet. But solid food is for grown, full grown men. But those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. Wow. Now, we want to grow. Yeah. Right? Proverbs, the fourth chapter shows us something. This is all God's Word. See, I learned not to say what I want to say, but what He tells me to say. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Oh, I'm going to read the verse 18, mm -hmm. but this all goes in contents. Yeah. Well, actually, here, verse 18. It says, the path of the just righteous is like the light of dawn hmm. that shineth brighter and brighter until it reaches the full strength hmm. and glory in the perfect day. So what he's saying here, you pay attention to what he's saying and you believe it. You get more and more light. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now that 20th verse, 
says, My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. That's what he's saying, listen to me, right? right? Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Amen? For they are life to those who find them and healing to and healing and health to their flesh. Amen? This is the, I'm reading from the 20th verse on down. Okay. And then, even going back to 
and forced us to get that tax. We did it. Because that's how this whole Romans 10, 13 started. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. So it can be done as a child. Right. You're under the now, Matthew 4, 4. When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness mm -hmm. after his baptism. Amen. He was baptized by John the Baptist and was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. To be tempted yeah. of the devil. I'm going to start at verse 1. This is John 4, 1. I mean, excuse me, Matthew. Matthew 4, 1. Y'all should know where the temptations are, isn't it? But you're the one, but you're the one. I know. Teacher, right? I know. Like, you know. That's the one I'm coming in the Bible. We learn. Here's what, <laughs> here's what happened. I'm going to read the fourth first. This is 4-4. You said first verse. Since we're running out of town, I'm going to read the fourth first right now. Get that into your Correct. spirit. It says, but Jesus replied, it is written and forever remains written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's reassuring if you look at it. What? That is. That's, that's the truth. That's like up there. That's very reassuring. Yeah, that is the truth. And see, uh, Romans 15.4 Before we go to Romans 15, 4, go to Duke around me. Let's see where Jesus yeah, got this. That's where I was Right, go there. Let's, let's, get, let's get where Jesus got this. Because <laughs> Jesus was saying what God said. Amen? I know what's not my name. Well, Duke around me, Dave Catholic. See, that was the Spirit. The Spirit was just telling me. You know? Deuteronomy. Well, I know Jesus is saying this, but where did he... You know, he only said what he heard God say, right? Well, that's why I say he, he, he perfect. So Always. let's look at verses 1 through 5, the 8th chapter. 8 through 5. Yeah, read that. Because I read too. Okay, you read all. You show? Well, actually, it's verses 1 through 5. Oh, it's 1 through 5. I'll read. I'll read. Just go ahead and read it. All the commandments, I'll read from the Amplified. Mm -hmm. All the commandments which I, which I command you this day, you shall be watchful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall earnestly remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these forty years in the wilderness, to humble you and to prove you, to know what was in your minds and heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Do what you're going to read I stopped at two. I mean, okay. through two. Well, he humbled you and allowed you to be hungry. You know, I was saying that before. And fed you with manna, mm -hmm. a substance which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, so that he might make you understand by personal experience that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. Therefore, know in your heart, be fully cognizant that the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you just as a man disciplines and instructs his son. Yeah, I remember that. So he, he wants to instruct us. Yes. Now let's go to Romans 15. The other thing I think we're going to end there. We learn a lot of times from personal That's how you experience. Learn. That he, that he and his Bible. written word. His written word. Every word. Every word. That proceeds out, out of the mouth of God. God. That's, how you, that's how you get it. That's and word. Paul, by the Spirit of God, in Romans the fifth. Chapter, the fourth verse says, For whatever was written in earlier 
times was written for our instruction so that through endurance Yes. And the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope yes. Yes. and overflow with confidence mm. in his promise. Amen. 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 Let's Amen. see, 14, 14 4. Oh, okay. Now, I got a whole lot more oh, written, but we're out of time. But here's what you got to do. When somebody's speaking to you, I don't care whether you're at your job or, at, you know, out there in public or, you know, in a church setting or in any church or even what I'm saying to you, check it out with the Word That's right. When Mary brought up a question. Okay. Where other people may have that question. Say your question. Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> we're out of time. We're running no, over. You were saying the word of God, hear the word of God, but like you got clarified that like, okay, so every word in the Bible is God. Every word in the Bible is the word of God. Right, so anything that anybody recites through the Bible, like you hear a word of God, right? Well, here's what the it's enemy not everybody Here's what the enemy does. You need to know this. Here's what the enemy does. First Corinthians 11. That's chapter. what I was going to say. Get on with me. Uh, you know, you we're going over. That's fine, though. You must. Uh, First Corinthians 11. Chapter. I mean, Second Corinthians. Paul, Paul brought me. it up. Second Corinthians. Paul brought it up. The 11th chapter. Mm -hmm. I was wondering why the Lord said, write this Same down. Same scripture. It's not in the word like this. They brought it up. Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses, see, there is a lot in the Word of God that Satan can twist. That's, right. that's what he was doing with Jesus in the wilderness. If you read that fourth chapter of Matthew, that's what he was doing. He was, he was twisting the Word of God. So here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, give me verses 3 to 5 and 15, uh, 13 to 15. And verses 13 and through 15. Do us, I'll read three, three, three. Unless Mary comes. Oh. Come on, let's okay, go. Okay, but now I am fearful lest that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by, by his kindness, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from whole heart and sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For you seem readily to endure it. If a man comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preach, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit, you once received, or a different gospel from the one you then received, and welcome, you tolerate all that well enough. Yet I consider myself as in no way inferior to these precious, extra, super, false apostles. There are well, super, 15. people going around saying they were super apostles during Paul's day, mm -hmm. and they, they were twisting them. the gospel. 15 to, uh, 13 to 15. Well, such men are counterfeit apostles, deceitful Listen, workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So it is no surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness with their deeds, but their end will correspond with their deeds. That's why you have to, everything you hear, Check it out with the Word of God and with the Holy Spirit, which is in you. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank, thank you. Lord. That's a blessing. Thank you for what you have given us, what we have heard, what you have spoken unto us through your Word. Let us now be doers of the Word of God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I mean, God is so good. There's so much in the Word of God, you can't go through it at one session. But hallelujah, what he gives us, we thank you.